Brian Halligan seemed like a typical happy 13-year-old. He liked to make his friends and family laugh and hoped to someday become an actor. He hung out at the youth center and went to middle school in Essex, Vermont. Brian was a very sweet, kind, gentle, sensitive boy. He was like that from day one. He just, he was a ray of sunshine in my life and, and very exuberant. He had so much energy, um, but also very sensitive. Ryan had a learning disability and wasn't particularly athletic. And as a result, had been bullied by a group of students beginning in fifth grade. You know how, how middle school was. It's just a way to like make people feel powerless and feel like, you know, like crap. And, and people will take it because they just want friends. More and more, he was coming to the car with a somber look on his face, and he'd, the minute he'd slam the door behind him, he'd be like, I hate that, you know, so-and-so. And I'd ask him why, and he'd say, he did this to me, and he said this, and he makes me feel so stupid, you know. And that would make, that would be enough to make him feel very awful about himself. I mean, other people who are a little thicker skin, it might not. Um, but it did him, unfortunately. With counseling, the situation seemed to improve. Then in seventh grade, a classmate started a rumor that Ryan was gay. As a result, Ryan retreated to the Internet as an outlet for his resentment and hurt feelings. The Halligans made a deal with their son that he could keep his computer in his room as long as his progress report from school remained positive. Uh, his progress report was not, was not good at all. Um, and, uh, you know, I, we... Again, we tried to be very loving, and supportive parents, but also very firm about the rules that we had. And I went into his room and I disabled his computer and I didn't get any kind of, uh, you know, high emotional response to what I had done. On October 6th, John Halligan traveled to Rochester, New York on business. The next morning at 6.30 a.m., John got a call from his wife, Kelly. Sometime after the family had gone to bed, Ryan had gone into the bathroom and quietly hanged himself. And I ended up taking a couple of days off from work and I read every single conversation because given the tragedy that we had, I was on a mission to turn over every rock and to try to understand everything that was going on in my son's life. And it was the most painful reading that I had to do in my entire life. It was just, it was, I, my heart just broke a thousand times over again. John soon discovered that the bullying that Ryan had experienced offline had continued online. I also, um, you know, found conversations on there where girls were pretending to like him, and then um, what I learned later was that they were just toying with him. And, uh, you know, in, in person they told him that uh, they really didn't want anything to do with him. And uh, that broke my heart. I just can't imagine the pain. Psychologists say that cyberbullying can be more emotionally devastating than physical bullying, that the technology allows users to inflict pain without being forced to see its effects. The result is a deeper level of cruelty. Teens can be greatly affected, especially teens, by comments from other people on the Internet because their sense of themselves is still developing. The more that they are looking for a connection from other people, the greater is going to be the impact and the effect. Ryan's online chat sessions with one particular student had become disturbing. Together, they explored the darker side of the Internet. And the two of them just fed off of each other's thought process that life wasn't worth living, that we hate the jocks, we hate the popular kids. And uh, somewhere along the way, there were conversations where they were brainstorming about suicide and what would be the painless way of doing it. My overall feeling was, is, uh, unfortunately for Ryan at this point in his life, this other kid was not good for Ryan. And perhaps Ryan wasn't even good for him. Ryan's death has compelled the Halligans to protect students and prevent other parents the same grief and loss. They got an anti-bullying law passed in Vermont, created a website, and John gives bullying awareness presentations to parents and students. It's uh, emotionally, it's very taxing because when I'm done with it, um, I typically get a ton of emails from the kids and from parents um, thanking me, but also expressing that, 
you know, prior to that presentation, they thought they had felt suicidal, um, but they realized the impact that it would have on their mom or dad and that it would be, that it's not a solution, that it would be devastating to the people that they love. Because of the nature of digital communication, messages can easily be misinterpreted. Face-to-face -face communication is still probably best for personal conversations. In Ryan's case especially, this might have made a difference. Uh, but because they didn't see him, they didn't hear his voice, they didn't hear the tone of his voice, they didn't see the body language that was going along with the words, there was a whole missed opportunity there of really detecting what was perhaps going on, what was really going on with Ryan. In most cases, other kids, when interviewed during the investigation, thought that it was a joke. And it wasn't until after uh, the suicide that they understood how important those conversations were. If you receive a harassing message online, the best thing to do, at least initially, is nothing. And I think that the best way to just fight people online is just to ignore them because it's just like when you're a kid, you know, if someone's harassing you, if you ignore them, they'll move on because they have nothing to work with. If they all, people feed off your response. So if you're getting harassed online, just ignore it and it'll go away. If the harassment continues and makes you uncomfortable, tell your parents or another trusted adult. Tell someone and not keep it inside because when you keep things inside like that, they just keep building up and you feel really bad about everything that happens. If harassment happens at school or is school related, report it to your principal. Your school should have a bullying policy in place. If the threat includes uh, violence or you feel unsafe for any reason, you should report it to your police department. Many students are afraid to report digital harassment for fear their internet connection or cell phone will be taken away. The best way to prevent this is through education. Is that it is important for them to teach their parents about computers, about the internet, about what they're doing online, because it's only through educating their parents that they're not going to get a knee-jerk reaction about taking you know, the high technology stuff away from them, the computers. Beyond knowing what to do if you are bullied, it's important to watch for signs that those around you may be bullied. Do they seem depressed? Are they avoiding school, friends, or activities? Do they hang by themselves? Are their grades going down? If you notice these signs, it may be time to ask them if they are being harassed. If you harass others, or if you have friends who do but you don't participate, you may still be part of the problem by reinforcing their behavior. Just be careful what you say to other people. Think about like how they feel and how it would feel if it was being done back to you. These, these aren't you know, faceless people that you're harassing. Like, these are, there are real people behind the screen and they are the ones who are getting hurt by what you do. It's not just somebody who, it's not a computer or a pro, you know, program that you're just antagonizing. It's someone who's actually getting hurt by what you say. People use the internet in their homes and they should feel safe in their own house. He just made you laugh, you know, he was always looking for an angle um, at any situation to make it funny and to bring humor into the picture. Ryan loved, um, he loved hanging out in the woods nearby. Um, I read so many times he would drag me out there and just loved walking around in the woods and um, doing things like uh, paintball. Uh, he loved to play paintball uh, in the woods. Um, We, uh, every summer we camped three weekends. He loved to get away and just camp. He was the kind of kid that didn't care that there, there was no ability to take a shower. You know, he actually preferred uh, the kind of rough in it scenario.
He just, he had a wonderful smile.